Welcome back, Zerke fans, to Nanalyze of Dawn. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we are having another exhibition match today. It's going to be Jasper versus Etsuri on Trojan Hills. Jasper going for the Shieldbot Factory, Etsuri going for the Cloakybot Factory. And that's kind of the standard matchup. Both of them starting out... Actually, never mind. Not quite standard. Jasper starting out in the back, more defensive. Not unusual, but more defensive. Etsuri starting out forward, which is basically where you always start with the Cloakybot Factory. It's actually kind of interesting. The way these players are playing this is pretty much textbook. Cloakie's going to be a little more aggressive. It wants to be in that forward expansion position. Has a little bit of an easier time expanding around because of the fact that the Conjurers do cloak when they're not in combat or not expand, not doing anything. So they can expand out more safely since they, if they get caught out, they can just walk onto the ridge and then they're fine. On the other hand, the Shieldbot Factories tend to start further in the back, partly because they're more defensive and partly because it's a little bit harder for the Convict to get out there safely. Because the Convict can't just escape. If it starts getting attacked, and there's no defenses around it, there's no bandits around to save it, it's going to die. It has no way to escape. Etsuri also, speaking of, setting up four Glaives, ready for a little bit of a raid. Actually, this is more than a little bit of a raid. This is, this is pretty intense. This is not a scouting raid. We actually saw Etsuri didn't go for anything early on Glaive-wise. They started out Conjurer, and then went five Glaives. Etsuri is going for- this is a Glaive rush. This is absolutely a Glaive Rush, and this expansion is completely undefended. One bandit is not going to stop five Glaives. The other bandit over in the corner, everything else in the production queue is going over to construction. Jasper trying to build their economy as quickly as possible. A risky maneuver, and one that Etsuri clearly saw coming, as the Glaives are about ready to engage. They are coming in here, should be able to take on a Metal Extractor before the bandit even gets to them. And there's the bandit goes down. Convict soon afterwards. Taking on that Convict means that this expansion is essentially completely un unattainable until about a minute or two na from now. And that is huge. I always say, go for the Constructors. Because if the Constructors go down, it delays the expansion so much more than if you just take out Metal Extractors. Unfortunately, these Glaives did not go in as fast as they could. That means the Outlaw is up. That means the Glaives have basically no way of getting through here. Etsuri, quick enough on the draw to make sure they're avoiding that Outlaw. But that was... Kind of close. Unfortunately, if Etsuri had attacked, they might have been able to take out a Metal Extractor or two. Wouldn't have taken out the entire base. Jasper's commander would have survived. Barely, but would have. However, it would have still been some damage. That being said, that being said, I respect what Etsuri has done. I respect their decision. They are not overextending. They are keeping their glaives around for a contain. They're making sure this expansion doesn't get taken for free. Scouting around to make sure there isn't anything else being built out under their nose that Jasper is just doing sneakily. And I like that. At the same time, they are also making sure that their economy is going and expanding a little bit faster, though I find it interesting. We're seeing Etsuri jump over to the corner expansion as far away from their main base as they can first. That makes sense. Etsuri, and normally that'd be a bit risky, but because Etsuri went for the Glaive attack, they can easily just take this expansion without thinking Jasper's going to counterattack, because why would Jasper be attacking them when Jasper themselves are under attack? So Etsuri playing, playing it out. Kind of risky, but definitely worth it, because now they have control over the entire back side of the... Or the entire north side of the map, which is exactly what they want. Same time, keeping pressure on Jasper, so that Jasper has to really work for it if they try to do it themselves. I mean, again, they need these outlaws. That's 500 extra metal just to secure these expansions, while Etsuri going for the lightest possible defenses, getting a Lotus, and that's it, at the farthest away expansion. On top of responding properly, getting up all these Ronin, I... Would kind of like to see a couple Reavers as well. Because ultimately this is going to be... Oh, they're saying Bandit Outlaw. It's going to think either Thug Outlaw or Bandit Outlaw. And either of those cases are good cases for Reavers. And it's okay, there they are. Okay. Looks like Etsuri was thinking the same thing. Just wanted to make sure I had a solid Ronin Force first. And that makes sense. Jasper, on the other hand, they're actually managing to hold on. The extra little bit of metal on the Outlaws has certainly paid off. I would like to see a bit more in the way of defenses, but the Outlaws at least slow down the harassment. Jasper's been able to build up more of their economy. They're still kind of falling behind, in large part because of the fact that this plateau over here, the right on the eastern side, that's very close to Etsuri's main base, the equivalent over here on the western side of the map is quite a ways away from Jasper's base, and because Etsuri knocked out Jasper's expansion attempt over on the west side, that slowed down Jasper's attempt to even think about taking this by about five minutes. So, that was a really well thought out raid coming out from Etsuri there, and it's still working beautifully up to now. We are, however, seeing Jasper getting fed up, going for the counter raid, sending the bandits up to take out this plateau expansion. There are a couple Reavers that are on the ready, 
but the Blandis should be able to at least wipe out all of this expansion. Possibly get rid of the Conjurer. The Conjurer does move, but it does just barely. Still, though, two Metal Extractors and no real cost to Jasper while Jasper's expanding themselves and getting a lot of overdrive. So Jasper's actually getting pretty close when it comes to economy. And a nice, efficient little raid there. That's never a bad thing. The only problem, though, is that now they have to deal with the fact that a bunch of Ronin are coming in. The Outlaws will not save them. Rogues are going to be what they need, or Bandits, but Bandits are going to have a hard time dealing with the Reavers. Again, that's a big reason I said bring the Reavers along with the Ronin. Reaver, Ronin, you get to deal with the Raiders that are going to try to get rid of the Ronin. So, Bandits coming in here. Going to try to do some damage. Bandits coming over in the Northwest. Going to be able to do a lot of damage. At this point, Etsuri might want to really think about attacking to distract Jasper more than anything. Because Jasper is going for the expansions. They're going to be able to take out six Metal Extractors at no cost to their bandits. There's like one Lotus in that entire setup. There is nothing stopping them. At the same time, though, Etsuri doesn't have a whole lot of resistance taking out Jasper's southeast expansion. Some bandits are trying to come in here, but there's so many Ronin, the Reavers are almost, are almost not even necessary. As the bandits are basically being torn to pieces. Sorry, bandits are... Yeah, basically being torn to pieces. That's exactly what I meant to say. I was distracted because the bandits over to the north are tearing the metal extractors and that conjurer to pieces, opening everything up into the main base, and only two metal or only two lotuses with a commander. That's something, but it's not necessarily enough. I feel like Etsri's gonna be somewhat distracted, but maybe Etsri's just thinking, you know what? No, 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 no. I have a bigger force. I can base trade this faster. I can stop these bandits. They're not gonna completely destroy my base. And indeed, Jasper retreating away, realizing there's not as much they can do against two lotuses with six bandits. They still have this one expansion over in the northwest, but I don't think Jasper realizes Etsri went for that. Because Jasper doesn't have a whole lot of scouting pre presence. Etsri, on the other hand, has been scouting all the time. They know exactly everything Jasper has. They've had this, this particular Sparrow up this entire game. And it's been really paying off. Stardust being taken up by a couple of Ronin, while at the same time the eastern side of the map. Many Ronin just swarming in. The Ronin Reaver Ball is doing its entire job. The Felons try... They were really trying. It's not a bad option if you have the setup for it. But again, the thing with shield bots, as always, is shield bots have to have their ball. If the shield bot does not have a proper setup, does not have a proper shield ball, does not have all the regeneration going from that, they are kinda hooped. And this is exactly what we're seeing right now. I am a little bit surprised we aren't seeing any snitches, though. When you consider the kind of army that's here, a couple snitches would do a really good job. Just because, yeah, okay, there's a couple reavers, but... As long as the snitches are already in place, it's not a problem. Bandits over in the north. Finished off. That eliminates Jasper's last little bit of harassment. But, again, Jasper still has options for defense. I just don't know if they have them in mind. Snitches are one of those units that you don't really think about all that much, unless you use them all the time. And I don't know if Jasper's the kind of player who uses them all the time. I don't think they are. I don't really recall seeing them used much. And in general, with utility units, you don't usually think of them. You usually are thinking, okay, my raiders, my riots, my skirmishers, your core units, and then whatever mid-game unit, like the felon or the knight, that you want to have in there as a way of providing a little bit of extra support as your opponent's army gets larger. But when it comes to the shield bots, they do have snitches. They do have a bomb. And they can just wipe out an entire group of units with, yeah, it's 160 metal, but you place them right in a group of units like this, that would scare Etsuri. Felons, however, I don't disagree with. I mean, that is still a strong mid-game unit. That is the unit you kind of want to build into. And enough of them, like, you know, two or three of them alongside a reasonably strong Thug Ball or a bunch of convicts would be enough to wipe out this army. 2,800 or 3,000 3, metal worth of units compared to 620 metal worth of a Felon plus all the other stuff being built up for a clean victory. It does kind of make sense. Same time, though, with the air switch coming in here from Etsuri, it's going to be that much harder for Jasper to actually deal with this. They do have some anti-air. I actually got Vandals a long time ago. When they first saw this army coming in, they got a Vandal. But one Vandal does not an anti-air defense force make. In fact, as, as Jasper's realized... Did they just realize? They just realized they don't have radar right now. They have nothing. They have absolutely no vision of what was going on over to the east of their base. And that meant Etsuri was just able to hang out there. And Jasper losing a few units, not realizing what they could do. And I think that's probably why they were attacking now that I think about it. I don't think they realize that Jasper had been containing them this entire time. Or, sorry, that Etsuri had been containing them this entire time. Jasper, now with most of their force outside of their base, getting a little bit of damage in there. And I don't totally disagree, but considering the economic disparity between the two teams, or between the two players, I am honestly somewhat concerned about Jasper's ability to maintain their position in this game. Only upside, again, is that Felons do still deal with ra Ravens without any problems. So at least they have that. They have that going for them. 
But I don't know how well that's going to work because it's just... <sighs> Etsuri is way too strong here. Has just way too many things. And it's... There's nothing that Jasper really has that's going to stop them. The felons, they went up front, they went up to the north side of the map, and they are not present to help deal with the force coming in that's just circling around to take out the western expansion again. From there, I'll be able to circle around and take out the main base, and there's one felon, three thugs, and a convict, and an outlaw. Yep. Okay, well... With that, it's going to be... At least a lot of rogues. That's something. I, I, at any rate, though, even with all these rogues, Jasper is still making their last stand. Etsuri, they have more than enough Ronin. They have... I mean, the Reavers aren't really going to help, but they have the Air Force coming in on top of that. They have Phantoms as well, just in case. Building up right outside of Jasper's base on top of that. The Felons, however, are showing their strength, getting rid of several of the Reavers, leaving the Ronin the only ones left, and the Rogues do outrange the Ronin, especially, I mean, Retreat Micro, of course, as does the Felon. So ultimately, there is a lot of damage coming in here that Etsuri is not able to deal with. Unfortunately, though, for Jasper, that's only going to last for so long. There's a flank coming on the eastern side of the map, which has no defenses dealing with it. There's a Phantom coming in alongside that. These Felons over the western side of the map are basically a distraction. Pulling Etsuri's forces out of position and opening everything up in the west on the eastern side of their base. And Etsuri, of course, this entire time, still expanding, still has four times the metal of their opponent, is not going to be in anything close to a problem anytime now. And it looks like it's just one, maybe one last shot. The one thing... How did these Ronin get here? Well, they're dead now. <laughs> but yeah, one last shot for Jasper to try to defend, and it's Honestly, a desperate effort. Liko coming in here to help deal with those felons. Once that's done... Actually, not just the felons. It's going to be enough splash damage to wipe out the entire bowl. Like, this is over with. This is done. There is nothing that Jasper has left on here. And not only that, there's Sparrow getting sniped out of the air. Thanks to the Phantom. So they're... One attempt finally to get it, to, they finally get this scouting going, they finally get themselves a good eye in the sky, and then Etsuri just says no. That's gotta hurt. What hurts, what may hurt less though is the fact that Jasper did have the time to actually pull their forces back into position to deal with the eastern flank. Again though, this phantom is going to be a problem, but it's not as big of a deal. The leak however, there it comes, there's a felon down along with half that shield ball. The rest of the shield ball is going to go down very quickly to that phantom. Jasper holding on valiantly, but I really don't see what options they have at this point in the game. They are they are surrounded on basically all sides. They are starting some reclaim, which is nice, but only enough to maybe get to halfway of their opponent's economy. And their shield ball is getting picked off one by one by a single phantom. This is not pretty. Jasper, do you have anything, any tricks at all? Spider Factory. Okay. I'm guessing for a Widow, or possibly for a bunch of Fleas to scout out this Phantom. Probably this Fleas, actually. Isn't it? That's the only thing that would make sense. I mean, yeah, get the Fleas and the Phantom. Okay. I'll take it. And then you drop the Shield Ball as well. That helps a bit. I mean, the thing with the Aspis is that they do have enough Shields they can actually block off a single Phantom shot. But it doesn't matter. It... Etsuri still wins. Jasper th still throws in the towel, realizing there's just not much they can do as the Eastern... As the Western attack approaches. And that's it. Etsuri takes it quite cleanly, too. <laughs> Wesley in the chat. Wow, Cloaky didn't lose. No, they didn't. I mean, to be fair, Trojan Hills, I'd say, is a map that actually is quite strong for Cloaky. But yeah, Cloaky didn't lose. It was actually a really good adaptation by Etsuri. They didn't really go for a lot of direct scouting. They just went for it on... They just went for it on the other... What was I going to say? They went for the harassment later on. They didn't go for early scout, as you often do with one or two glaives. They went for five glaives off, off a conjurer start. A bit of a risky play. They didn't rely on Jasper not going for harassment themselves. And also on Jasper getting kind of thrown off balance by the early raid. 
But the fact that they did that and then scouted out and saw, oh, the outlaws are coming, sw switched eight to Ronin, I mean, Et3 was just playing that really smart. And they got that first constructor. Again, early constructor kills are a huge deal. Especially when your opponent is playing shield. I mean, the thing is the shield's anti-glaive capabilities are the outlaws, and those are slow. And we saw it, 750 metal was poured into the outlaws. I mean, that's 10 metal extractors. That is 10 metal extractors that could have been taken for the cost of those outlaws to protect them. Even when you consider the lotuses. Or, wait. Well, lotus is like 150. Anyway, even when you consider the lotuses. I'm thinking of these prices memorized by now, but there are a lot of units in this game. Sorry, Lotus is 90. Even Lotuses, that's still five metal extractors with a Lotus each, and usually have one, maybe two Lotuses per three. So, that was a huge blow. That would have been this entire peninsula, maybe some of the center. Instead, the outlaws had to be made, in, and that completely slowed down. That stalled Jasper's economy. But, that game is now over. We are moving on to the next and last one for tonight. It's going to be a bit of a shorter stream today, because I am a little bit... I'm a little bit... What's the word? Sorry, I'm... Yeah, blanking. Let's go to the next game. Next game is going to be... What are ye? It's going to be 400 versus Merc on Izki Channel. A map that looks like it might get rotated out into the next map rotation coming up shortly. But I want to see what's going to happen because... This is still one of the better C-maps I've seen. And I'd like to see how it's developed over the last couple months. So stay tuned for that. It'll be up in a couple minutes. I'm a little bit, a little bit, Wesley. I, I am a little bit, a little bit. It's just a little bit, a little bit. Little bit's my little bit thing. Back in a little bit. 